for example, one experiment that we did some years ago was to have the activity of one brain directly sent to the brain of another rat. So what we'll see here is that we'll record activity from the brain of one rat while it's choosing and pressing a lever on the left and we record this activity. We send it to the brain of the second rat on the right. He sees two lights and he needs to decode the activity from its brain and now choose the correct level. So what this means is that you can send the activity from one brain to the other brain and it can decode it and use it. Now it's going to be to the right side. You see the rats getting stimulation and now it goes to the right side. So and it gets the reward, and both rats are happy. So what happens here is that it's possible to send activity from one part of the brain to another part of the brain, from one brain to another brain. And now you see, for example, a combination where you have not only recording and stimulation, but you also have a specific um, sort of soup and materials being implanted to help recovery. So. What happens is that now these techniques are being combined with other things. In this case, for example, you have a brain controlled exoskeleton for lower limbs, and there's actually more to it, and I'll explain it in a second. So, what they did was they had an exoskeleton, and a paraplegic patient was controlling the exoskeleton with brain activity. But as the patient walked with the exoskeleton, there were sensors on the soles of the exoskeleton that were translating the signals to the forearms. So what this means is that at each time that the person was stepping with the exoskeleton, uh, she was feeling on the forearms the moment that it was stepping. And this had uh, very impressive results where people started to improve from their lesions.